Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and this today we're going to deal with proportional problems. Uh, I can set up a ratio and proportions to solve word problems dealing with real life situations. Now, I have a real life in quotes because uh, in some of these cases I have no idea who would ever want to solve this problem, um, but it does deal with applications. So, uh, in the in this handout, and if you printed it, you know there's quite a lot of um, problems here. Uh, however, I'm not going to go over every single one of them because this is a combination of your note and the work for the unit. Um, so there's a bunch of different problems on here that I want you to work through. Each of these problems have come from the EQAO uh, at the end of the year. Uh, some of them were multiple choice questions and I've just taken away the choices. Uh, some of them are long answer questions. Um, all of them deal with proportion or unit rate in some way. So I'm going to do the first one and then we're, we're going to sort of skip through and, and just talk about each question individually a little bit. Uh, so the first one says, the cost of an MP3 player, and I'm just going to get my highlighter here so I can highlight the key bits of information. The cost of an MP3 player is $299. A newer model costs 20% more. Which of the following, and this is one of those word problems that says that it was multiple choice, which of the following, there's no following. So if it says that, I've just taken them away. And what I want you to do is actually calculate um, the final answer. So it says, which of the following is the closest sale price of the newer model after a 30% discount? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, MP3 player was $299. The newer model costs 20% more, and then it's given a 30% discount, and we want to know how much it costs. So we're going to take a look. The cost of an MP3 player is $299. The newer model costs 20% more, so we need to figure out what 20% of 299 is. So I'm going to just write down some communication here. I'm going to say newer model. And I need to figure out what 20% of this number is. So I'm going to multiply it of, means multiply, 0 0.2. So 299 times 0 0.2. is 59.80. Now that's not the cost of the newer model. The newer model costs $59.80 more than the old model. So we have to add this on to it. So we start another line and we say 299 plus 59.80 equals, and you can do that on your calculator if you want to, um, and here's the nice thing, I still have this 5980 on here, if you don't clear your calculator all the time, then you can just go plus 299, uh, 358.80. Okay, so we got our newer model, and this is the price of the newer model. Okay, This is how much more it costs than the old model. This is the price of the newer model. Okay, So I've dealt with this little bit of information. Now it says what is the price after a 30% discount? So we need to find the discount. The discount is going to be 30% of the sale price. And this was the price of the newer model, so I need to do 30% of the sale price. And so we do 30% as a decimal and 0 0.3 of, means multiply, the sale price is 35880. And now we take that and we do 3. And look at that. I've still got it on my calculator, so I just need to go times 0.3. 
10,764. Now remember that that is not the new price. That is, in fact, the discount. So this is the amount I save. So to figure out the new price, we have to take the original and subtract the discount. And so that's going to give me the original price was uh, $358.80. And we're going to subtract the discount, which is $107.64. And I'm going to have to move this just a little bit. Sorry, you can't do it. Um, and we say $358.80. Subtract. 107.64 is 251.16. And so we can say, therefore, the newer model after the discount is two hundred and fifty one dollars and sixteen cents. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other questions that are here. This one says Aiden is buying a new CD player. The player was selling for eighty four dollars and seventy nine cents and is now on sale for twenty five percent off. Which of the following is closest to the total cost of the CD player, including 15% sales tax? So in this case, if we're looking at what's important, we know that the original price is $84.79 and we're taking 25% off. So that's one calculation. And then the next calculation is going to add 15% sales tax back on top of that. And so we did an example like this in the, in the last lesson. So you can follow along with that. Um, I'm just going to put sort of point form down here. The first thing you're going to have to find is the discount. And the discount in this case is 25% of the original price. I'm going to shorten that to OP. And then the uh, sale price will equal the original price, which I'm going to shorten to OP, minus the discount. And now to add sales tax on top of that, uh, if you want to figure out just tax, and you might not want to write this down because this might not be the way that you that you figured out. If you want to add just the tax, or find out just tax, you do 0.15 times the sale price because it's 15% of the price. But if you want to find the total, you can multiply by 1.15 times the sale price. And what this does is this one out in front acts as the original price. So it adds on the original price plus the sales tax, which gives you the total entirely. Next one here, it says, what is the cost of a portable CD player, including 15% tax? So this is kind of the same as the one before it. We've got $89. We're going to take 30% off the item. So here's our information. $89. We're taking 30% off. And then we're adding on the 15% tax. So this isn't a whole lot different than this one. It's just that now the CD player is in a picture and you have to take your information from the picture rather than from the words on the page. Next one. A ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters above ground. It bounces to 90% of its previous height on each bounce. So what's important here? Well, it started at 10 meters and it bounces to 90% of its previous height. It's already in bold for us, but this is important too. 
on each bounce. Okay. And then it's asking us, what is the approximate height that the ball bounces to on the fourth bounce? So it's going 90% of, remember that'll be times 0.9, or you can set up a ratio if you want to. Um, but we need to do this calculation a few times. So we can say after first bounce. After the first bounce, it's at 90% of its original height. So its original height is 10 meters, and then it's at 90% of that. So 0 0.9, which is going to give us 9 meters. Now, it's going to bounce again. After second bounce, dot, dot, dot. Now this says it's at 90% of its previous height, so its previous height in this case is 9 meters, and we have to times that by 0 0.9. So after the second bounce, it's going to be 8.1 meters. So notice it didn't lose quite as much height on the second bounce. It lost a full meter because it was 10 and it only bounced to 9, so it lost a full meter on the first one, but not a full meter, only 0.9 of a meter on the second bounce. So after third and after fourth need to be calculated as well. I'm hoping that you can handle that. And we'll talk about a couple other things. Um, let's see. A frame around a photograph is five centimeters wide. So that's this is what it means by five centimeters wide. We got the five centimeters here, five centimeters here. This will be five centimeters here, five centimeters here. So it's the wood that makes up this frame is five centimeters wide. What percentage of the entire area is the frame? So this one we need to find the area of the frame and then find the area of everything and figure out what that is as a percent. So can we figure out the area of the frame? The area of the entire place is 20 by 30. So total area, and that includes the picture, total area, and remember it's a rectangle so it's length times width, is 20 by 30, or 600. And then it would be really easy to find the area of the picture area of picture. And again, it's a rectangle, so length times width. And when I write LW side by side, that means length times width, even though I haven't put the time symbol. Um, it's 10 by 20, or 200. And in this case, these are going to be centimeters squared. So how do I figure out the area of the frame? The area of the frame, just this part here, just this part that I'm coloring in here, that's what we want. We want the area of that frame. Uh, what I know is this total area. That was my first calculation. And my second calculation was just this area, the picture. That was this calculation. And now what I want is just the difference between those two. Oops. I want this area. So it's the difference between the two. I need to subtract those two things. Okay. So the area of the frame is going to equal 600 minus 200, which equals 400. So I've got all of these things here. None of those are what the thing asks for. It says what percentage of the entire 
area is the picture frame. So I need to set up a fraction. What fraction is it? Well, the picture frame is 400 centimeters squared and the entire area is 600. So that's what this is asking for. What percentage of the entire area is the frame? 400 divided by 600. Uh, so remember how we did this before? We did 400 divided by 600 and then multiplied by 100 percent to change this into a fraction. So 400 divided by 600 is 0.66666 repeated. So if I multiply that by 100, I get it in percent, so it's 66.7 percent, or approximately 67 percent of the frame. Okay, now I'm going to leave it there. There's quite a few questions here, and I want you to try and work through it, and notice that there's a few different different things we're doing. A lot of them work with percent. There are some that work with ratios. Let's see one. Here's one that would work with a ratio. Let's start to cover to talk about this one. A four liter can of paint covers an area of 36 meters squared. What area will a 10 liter can of paint cover? So what we have here is the ratio that four liters can cover 36 square meters. And so this is paint and this is area. And I strongly suggest you do stuff like this. Put the words down so that you know which way this is. Now we have to set up another ratio. We have one other piece of information here. We got 10 liters. Where does that 10 liter go in my ratio? Uh, the top has a liters with it. It's paint, 10 liter paint. So we put 10 liters here and then we have something to solve for. And now we can cross multiply or do whatever we need. Um, to solve it. So there's lots of questions here for you to work on um, and hopefully you'll understand how to do proportional problems when you get them all done.